Despite being Gershwin's most famous work, we'll never know what the first performance sounded like. Pressed for time, he'd not even written down much of the solo piano part. He simply improvised on the spot, nodding to Whiteman when he wanted the orchestra brought back in. It's probably why the piece worked so well, because Gershwin turned his lack of formal training to his advantage. What mattered to him was the most immediate impact of his music on the listener. It's precisely why the classical music snobs hated Gershwin's piece. To them it was a formless mess, a string of themes randomly glued together against all the rules of the classical symphony. But sometimes the rules really are there to be broken, and Rhapsody and Blues stood for a new sort of freedom. Perhaps it's this very freedom that explains how, from one evening in a smoky Manhattan billiards parlour, a landmark of American music was conceived. <laughs>